what I'm going to do for an intro for this video. Hmm, I wonder if I can get that narrator guy again. Dave? Yes, boss. Can you get the narrator? Right-o. Ah, finally, this year is coming to a goddamn end. What a year. Especially that horrible point where I had to do a YouTube video. How low could you get? But it's over now. You can sit down with a nice glass of mulled wine. You can forget about all of that nonsense. Wait, excuse me. Who the hell are you? You look like Bigfoot's wife. Are you the narrator? I'm a narrator. You're the- <laughs> There you go, boss. Thanks, Dave. Get off me, you fucking hooligan. Right. Where the fuck am I? Ah, oh, piss whistle. Not you again. Hi. I suppose you want me to do some kind of funny intro for your YouTube video, right? Yep. And tell me, why should I do it? Because I'm awesome. I hardly think you can afford me right now. I'm at the big leagues. Two words. Matthew McConaughey. Well, I'm assuming you want me to do something like, Welcome to Elster Nation, where he talks about his big balls or something like that. Perfect! Wait, I don't- I mean, uh... Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Elster Nation. Welcome to this video. I was supposed to be getting another video out before the end of the year. However, that's not gone to plan. It will be coming later on down the line. But for now, you'll have to do with this. I put this together rather rapidly, but I wanted to explore balls. Only messing, I wanted to explore the concept of bravery when it comes to painting large Warhammer projects. Do you have the balls or the cojones to do large painting projects? Now I am messing, don't worry internet, I'm just joking. Just to get that out of the way before everyone jumps down my neck. But I wanted to explore the aspect of why people don't like painting large Warhammer projects and why they don't want to do it. I believe it's a fear factor. However, let's explore that topic and let's have a look at why you might need giant balls to paint big Warhammer. So there's two factors when doing this video. One, why do people want to do this? And two, why do people not want to do this? I know that's a little bit on the nose, but I do need to outline there are two sides to this coin. Not everyone's gonna wanna do this, but I wanna focus on why people don't and why people do. Now for me, I like doing this because it soothes some kind of uh, possibly OCD about getting everything done. So I will take it all in one giant step to one giant step and I will move them along step by step throughout the entire project. I really don't like going back through things. If I were to finish something and then I had to go back and do more again, that's the most frustrating thing for me. I want to do it all in one hit. Now, why wouldn't someone want to do that? Basically, it comes down to fear. Fear is the factor here. People see that amount and they get scared. They think, oh my God, this is gonna take me forever. And that's the biggest problem. It won't take you forever as long as you tackle it. If you sit and procrastinate and you let your fear control you, essentially you will never get it done because you don't believe you can get it done. And that is one of the biggest hurdles I believe there is. There are more factors, but I think that is the initial point of why people do not do this and why people focus on skirmish games. So we're gonna have a look at why people with bigger balls like painting bigger Warhammer. Do you need the giant balls? We get one ball and a two ball and we slam them together to get big balls. I am joking internet, don't bite my head off. <laughs> I apply my methodology to all aspects of the entire project, from the assembling, to the painting, to the priming, every single thing I try to do in one hit. Now, you can vary it up. This isn't gospel law, this isn't the Codex Astartes, by all means, you can vary this up, so you don't need to worry too much about that. But, 
it is easier if you do all of one thing than do all of another thing. I work on a simple left to right system. What's on the left hand side is not done and then when it is done it moves to the right hand side. Once it's in the right hand side of that step we can move on to the next step. Once that part is done of that step it moves into the left hand side. So my entire process is literally a left right scenario. However using our techniques using our brain we can find cheats and methods to help us out get past this fear aspect and one of them is Colour Forge. Now the guys over at Colour Forge sent me these. I was introduced to them at the UK Games Expo by my good friend Josh at the Pickle Jar and they kindly sent me some stuff out to try out. Now, they had no idea who I was or what I did and they kindly sent them to me for trying out. So I thought, what an honor, and I put them through their paces. I took one can of the silver and I decided to see how much I could actually get done. So I can actually give back to Color Forge now and say how many models are done. I did all of my Alpha Legion and then I also did a whole bunch of Thousand Suns as well. Just to, you know, see how far I could go with it. And that's the result. If you want to pick up your own cans of Color Forge, check out Firestorm Games. Affiliate links will be in the description below. Now, while I'm not one for talking rubbish, but I can tell you this because I've actually tested it out. One can of Color Forge will cover approximately 190 Marines, six small tanks, four medium to large tanks, and 13 Dreadnought style walkers. So that's how much you can get out of one can of Color Forge. Now there are tools and things to help us along with this process and one of them is the airbrush. It's hard to say that it isn't a game changer but it is a bit of a game changer. I don't want to rub it in people's faces that if they don't have an airbrush but it does speed things along drastically. If you are thinking about painting large armies or large amounts of Warhammer then I would probably suggest having a look into it even just to get Zenith or Highlights you can manage to whiz through all your base coats, get them all done, get your varnish on, ready for decals, and everything can be done rather rapidly. Now with this army, I actually made a bit of a blunder. I actually made them a bit too dark and I used a really odd technique of actually thinning the paint off the model again. So I actually decided to paint on some thinner to take away a coat of paint to give the highlights back. This would be more commonly done in oil painting, but I decided to actually use it with acrylics and it kind of did the job. This is one of the points in the army project which I hope I can appeal for you to get to once you see this volume of work done because this didn't take that long to do to be honest with you something close to a week then it really gives you a spurt of inspiration of like oh this is an army this is ready to go big giant balls however it is a little bit of a full solution as well because the next part takes even longer and this is all the little details using stuff like contrast paints from games workshop and also using the same color in multiple areas for multiple applications for example the inner cabling the gun the gun holster all using the same color it's not a problem people might say oh you know it's a bit it's a bit cheap you're doing hundreds of models here you can take some shortcuts so i appeal to you just take those shortcuts don't worry about it too much the end result will be monstrous and people will start calling you a machine for reasons that you are still yet to figure out because this isn't too hard to do. Many balls are needed. We need a one ball and a two ball and a two balls, many balls. Also as well, stuff like stencils can be really handy as well because it can give you a really quick, interesting finish for something which didn't take much effort at all. Literally, I just put the stencils on this thing and then sprayed it with a rattle can and I got these results and it looks amazing. So again, take as many shortcuts as you can. You want to make this task go from big to smaller to be condensable and manageable for your big balls to tackle this project. You want to get the ball? You get the second ball. You then got balls. Again, I'm joking about the big balls thing. But you know, internet and kidding have to explain myself, otherwise the world blows up. But as you can see in this video as well, I'm using the same colors on all the processes, the tanks, the Marines, the Dreadnoughts, they all get the same treatment, all with the same colors. So if you're clever about it and you manage to manage your time correctly, you can do it all in one hit. You can do one color one day, another color another day, the third color the last day, and then a varnish the third, fourth day. So you can, in four days, you can have the entire army 
base coated, ready to go for the initial stages of it. So, and that is game worthy at that point in time. But if we really want this army to shine, we do need to add stuff like decals. We need to put layers of varnish in and stuff like that. It goes quicker than you think if you're in a batch painting process. Left to right, right to left, just work that way. Now, this is a point where I think a lot of people fall over. They get to this point and they go, right, I am really tired of doing this. And that is fine. I understand it. I get it. And this is where the fear aspect comes back in because it's taken so long. It's now a problem. They feel like they're never going to complete it. They feel like they're not going to get that. If you persevere, you will get through this. If you use my tips from Operation Fat, you can get this done pretty quick. But again, when I say pretty quickly, I mean a couple of weeks. I'm not talking a couple of days. And I think that is the fear aspect which people are not entirely sure of. Many balls are needed for this task. They think when I say something is done quickly, I mean a couple of hours. I don't, I mean a couple of weeks. But this is where the grind can come in. And you've got to work through it. All those little details, all the eye lenses, the tracks of tanks, the individual parts of separation, washes, weathering, all of that stuff becomes an aspect and another step to do. This is the point where a lot of people drop off because it is a grind and you do need to get through it. However, I find it quite enjoyable to be fair, because at this point I can see real progress. Not everyone thinks the same as me though. How many balls do you need? to have this many balls. I'd say at least two. One is acceptable, zero is right out. Now another aspect as well, which is one of the biggest problems of batch painting and doing army projects like this is shiny syndrome. Shiny syndrome is the worst culprit for stopping armies in their tracks. Shiny syndrome comes along and you see a brand new army you want to start so you will drop the army you are currently working on and move on to the new one you would be surprised at how often it happens. Especially when you're in the middle of a grind, you've got to get all this work done and then something even better comes along and you think, oh, that's cool, that's really cool, I want to do that now. And in all honesty, the thought of finishing that army completely goes out the window. This applies to general hobbyists and YouTubers alike. YouTubers especially so, because they really need to keep on top of the latest current trend. But yes, shiny syndrome is the worst culprit and I think that needs to be acknowledged as a big problem shiny syndrome is a big problem on pretty much all fronts to be fair so to anyone that's thinking of painting a large army or painting a lot of models all at once remember shiny syndrome is a problem ignore it keep in your mind that this needs to be done first once this is done you can move on to the next one you could even purchase the stuff for the next one but this needs to come first this needs to get done again I'm saying this needs to get done because this is what I tell myself. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do anything like this. You can do whatever the hell you want. But this is what I tell myself to be able to do big projects like this. I class myself as having gigantic balls. Big balls equals big Warhammer. Would you like to know more? But you might think otherwise. Again, internet, I'm joking. So don't, don't blow up. Don't blow up. Okay. All the little details on the army, I think, are actually the fun part. Once you get to the point where the army is pretty much done, and you've got past the initial grind, everything is looking okay. After this point, an issue can occur. You need to add in another element, the base. Now, I loved this part, to be honest with you. I got to spend some time with my family, and we basically snapped off all the bodies, and we made some bases. Now, I use DAS air drying clay here. I just rolled it out and then use a green stuff whirl rolling pin to create the base. I then use the green stuff whirl cutting circle things and cut them all out. After they dried, I glued them to the bases and then I could paint them after that. 
it's quite a handy thing. It's not too expensive. I think the Das Clay cost me about six quid, and I've done four or five hundred bases out of it. So, yeah. But you do have to put the effort in. Again, a little bit of forethought, a little bit of planning, and you can do some awesome stuff. Also, as well, really handy tip, if you're going to use DAS, greaseproof paper on whatever you're rolling it out on because this stuff sticks. It is sticky. It's weird. Also, as well, if you have a kind of marble slab that you would use for cooking, maybe a cutting slab or something like that, not wood, not anything with texture, something pretty, like, solid, you can use that for drying out on. It's pretty good. Again, another step which can be a very daunting factor that can actually cause a crippling set of... I can't do this, I don't want to do this. We take one ball and we add another ball and we have balls. Again, internet, I am just messing with you. Now, to be honest with you, when I was doing this video, I thought I was gonna do a giant tutorial, but then I realized, ah, Alpha Legion tutorials, but actual point of the video is to show that doing large armies is not as big a task as people make it out to be. It can be done. It depends on you though. It depends on your timeline, what you've got available, what you can do, and what you want to commit to at the end of the day. I committed two months to this army and I got it done within two months. You might be different. You might not have that capability. You might not want to do that. That's fine, but scale your own expectations to meet the demand that you need to do to complete the project. Again, you don't have to do this. Do whatever the fuck you want. I'm just telling you what I do to help it make a little bit of sense of why I do these things and why you need gigantic balls to paint gigantic Warhammer. Big Warhammer equals big balls. Again, joking. I tried to class each aspect of the painting as its own little challenge. So I did oil washes, I did airbrushing, I used the dirty down rust stuff, I did various different things, all to mix it up a little bit. And I think this is one of the key things you need to do in large projects like this. Every now and again, mix it up. If you are getting sick and tired of painting bolt guns, start painting some eyelets, start doing the bases, start doing something else just to alleviate it. So you are doing different tasks and you're not getting bored, but you are still working towards the same goal. If you're not working towards the same goal and you flip to another project, you will stop, you will lose your momentum and you'll move on to that one. This one will go in the box and then it won't see the light of day for another six months. You know, you've all done it. I'm not judging, I've done it, but you know, I'm just giving you some advice on how to get around it. Also as well with this army, I decided to be a little bit OCD and they've all been pinned to the base because super glue doesn't stick very well to paint. So all of these guys got pinned onto the base as well. I think it's also wise to manage your expectations when it comes to the color scheme that you're doing with this army. A really silly complicated color scheme which requires you to wet blend everything is not going to be good for 200 marines or 200 troops or 200 whatever you're painting. Make it a little bit simpler. Make it something that you can do quicker. If you're doing something complicated, just shrink the expectation down. Again, this is about managing the expectation versus the commitment. And that is it. It is a commitment. And that is what people are afraid of at the same time. People don't want to commit. That's absolutely fine. Again, you don't have to do this. Do whatever the fuck you want. But I committed to saying, I'm going to do this army it's gonna get done, then it's out of the way. AKA, Operation FAP in full effect, one job done, move on to the next one. One step closer to finishing all the models. Now, don't forget the all important task of rimming. Now, whether you rim forwards or you rim backwards, it's up to you, but just be careful, it can be a little bit messy, so try to be tidy when you're rimming, okay? Okay. <laughs> The main goal I can say is when you're doing large army projects like this is try and get to the end. Try and get that. Once you see it all assembled, once you see it all painted almost to that level, you'll be kind of, you'll get the itch to complete it because it is so frustrating having it nearly complete that it will probably push you on to get it done. So if I can say anything for anyone that wants motivation on how to paint large armies like this, get it to the stage where it's almost finished. At that point, you'll be compelled to do it. And even if you don't do it at that point, it's pretty much done anyway. So you could take it to a game. No one's gonna notice that you haven't painted the eye lenses on Fred there. So that's absolutely fine. So at the end of the day, 
Do you need to have giant balls to paint giant Warhammer? No, you don't. Not at all. But you do need to commit. And that's what scares people. People don't want to commit. People don't want to miss out. FOMO is a big thing, and shiny syndrome is another thing. But if you can work quicker, you won't miss out. Unless you're an obsessive compulsive buyer. In which case, yeah, I want to go see a counselor about that one. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this video. It's been a strange one, by all means. As I said, I wanted to get something else out, but that's not going to plan. It will be coming soon. But for now, this is what you've got to deal with. Giant balls, because I couldn't think of anything else. However, I'm hoping you've learned a little bit. I'm hoping it's maybe explained the concept of why you might not want to do Warhammer and maybe how you might overcome that factor. However, you might be steadfast and think, yeah, no, nah, I don't want to do that which is absolutely fine as well. As I said always, do whatever the fuck you want. Thank you for watching though. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday period, whatever you're doing, and I'm hoping 2023 is going to be a better one than this year. This year has been all kinds of crazy. 2023, here we come. Everyone, be good, be safe, have a wonderful holiday period, eat too much. I will see you in that wonderful period called New Year's where everyone's stressed because they've eaten too much, spent too much money, and now we've got to deal with the aftermath. So. Let's bring on the aftermath. Let's go. See you then, everyone. Bye-bye. How many balls do you need for Christmas? Women, you can answer that comment in the comment section below. Oh, I'm going to get punished on the internet for this one.